Hi, I'm Grant Hulse with the FRAM marketing team here at Cyprus. Today we're going to use the PSOC 4 Pioneer Kit with an adder board that will showcase our serial FRAM memory products. FRAM stands for Ferroelectric Random Access Memory. It has three key advantages over an E-squared PROM. First is endurance. Now endurance is defined as the number of times a non volatile memory cell can be rewritten before it wears out. For serial E-squared PROM, that number is about a million times. That works out to about two years if you write to a certain address every minute, or two weeks if you write to the same address every second. Now compare that to an FRAM. FRAM's endurance number is 100 million times higher, or 100 trillion, that's 10 to the 14th. That's millions of years if you write to the same memory location several times each second. This makes the FRAM technology effectively unbreakable. Second is speed. Any write to a serial E-squared PROM takes a very long time. They usually group together a whole page of memory and then write it all at one time. This takes many milliseconds. FRAM is different. You can write a single byte or a few words at 40 megahertz clock speeds, which is over 5,000 times faster than similar writes to that E-squared. Even when replicating the E-squared PROM's function and writing full pages at a time, our FRAM product can do those page writes 200 times faster. Third is power. Not only is it faster and more non-volatile, it also offers these features at a much lower power or current level. This makes FRAM the most suitable solution for anything needing ultra-low power, like handheld battery-operated applications. We're now going to go through a detailed discussion on setting up the demo and getting the software loaded. So I recommend you have your demo kit and your PC right in front of you at this point. This is the demo board. It clips onto the top of the PSOC 4 Pioneer kit. On the bottom of the board, you can see the four connectors, J1 to J4. These line up with the connectors on the Pioneer kit. Just line up the four connectors and seat the FRAM board on the Pioneer kit board. Here is the assembled demo. The demo board is mounted to the Pioneer kit. This switch one, SW1, powers the two sockets separately. So please put it on off position for now. I've connected the USB cable, but just to the Pioneer kit so you can orient your board. I haven't connected it to the PC yet. Our board has two sockets here on the top. One is for an FRAM part, and one is for an E-squared PROM part. This is so we can do side-by-side -side tests that compare the technologies. The 256K FRAM is here in this socket. This particular FRAM is an SPI or SPI or Serial Peripheral Interface part, but you can switch it to an I2C part, uh, change densities, etc. The sockets are for 8-pin SOIC packages. We sent several of these FRAMs along with the kit. With the USB connector at the bottom, the top mark letters on the package are right side up, and pin 1 has a dimple. The FRAM IC goes here in relation to this USB connector. The socket is spring-loaded. Once you've placed the IC, push the socket down, then let it up and it will grab the leads. The second one is a 256K serial E-squared PROM. A few of these also came with the kit. This has the same spring-loaded socket. Now, go ahead and pause the video until you get the kit assembled as I've shown you to this point. Now that it's assembled, we are ready to hook it to the PC, download the software, and run our demos. You can now turn switch one to the on position. Again, this allows power to the two socketed parts. And plug the USB cable into the PC. These three status LEDs will come up like this. And the demo board is ready to run. Pause the video here until you get to this point. After you install the demo software, Go to Start All Programs Cypress, then look for the Serial Spy FRAM demo and click and open that demo. That should open this demo screen up. Okay, that works. Let's close this demo screen again for right now. Now, we're ready to load the .hex file and configure the demo board. Again, go to Start All Programs Cypress and open PSOC Programmer. I have 3.20.0. Make sure you're connected to the board in the bottom right. Then select the hex file you have saved on your local drive and click the program button. 
There, we're ready to run the demos. Let's look closer at the demo screen. Open it up again. There are four sections on the screen. The device settings section, top left. The test panel section that shows our three test choices in the bottom left. And the FRAM data results and the E squared PROM data results over on the right side. Let's review the device settings. U1, U3 is the first socket where we put the FRAM IC. U2, U4 is the second socket where we put the E squared PROM IC. Both these parts are 256 K bit, so the density is set correctly at 256. The page size of the 256K EEPROM we supplied you is 64 bytes. The write delay can be set between 0 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds. EEPROMs have a worst case write file of 5 milliseconds. We will vary this number in our tests. For write data byte, we only need to set this first box to any number between 00, 0 and FF hex. When we do that and click out of the box, the inverse hex number shows up in the second box. These are just test patterns we use the hex number and its inverse for to fill the full memory during these simple comparison tests. Let's now look at the test panel. Here we see three different tests we can use to show FRAM's value over E squared PROM. The write delay test, the throughput test, and the power fail test. First, I'll show you the write delay test. This test runs the same data at full speed into both the FRAM and the E squared PROM devices. The FRAM is going to catch all the data without any errors because of its superior speed, while the E squared is going to miss most of the data because it has to wait for each page of memory to be deleted before a write can be done. This page delay is worst case 5 milliseconds. I'll show you what this looks like. We'll set the write delay to 0 milliseconds. In other words, there will be no delay between page writes to the E squared PROM, which does violate that part's spec. I'll put hex 55 in the write data byte. The complement data automatically will calculate to AA hex. Again, you can put any hex number in here for any test. Just change the number to put it in between each test you run. Execute the write delay test by clicking the write delay test button. Let me do the math for you. With 64 bytes in a page, there are 512 pages of E squared PROM in a 256K part. The results show the FRAM caught all the data, all green. But the E squared PROM only wrote 86 pages of the 512 pages correctly, because we did not allow the slower E squared PROM part to clean each page between the writes. Now let's run the test again and give the E squared PROM a bit more time. Let's set the page delay to 1 millisecond. This is still too fast for the E squared PROM, but it should be able to get more data into its memory with this bit of help. I randomly change the write data byte to 33 hex. The complement data becomes CC hex. So the test can get a fresh comparison. This time again, the FRAM is all green. The E squared PROM has done better also, but even with one millisecond delays, the E squared PROM cannot capture all the critical data. Finally, we run it one more time. Let's follow the E squared PROM spec this time and set the write delay to five milliseconds. This will give the E squared PROM the time it needs to complete its page erase and rewrite processes. I randomly again change the write data byte to 66 hex. The complement data becomes 99 hex and we execute. Now look, the E squared PROM is catching all the data and is green and fast like the faster FRAM parts. Another speed comparison test we offer is the throughput test. The throughput test is like a car race. Both memories are filled as fast as possible. The faster memory, the FRAM, crosses the finish line first when the memory is fully written. The EEPROM crosses the finish line much later when it finally has all its memory written. To execute the throughput test, set the write delay to five milliseconds. This write delay is only for the SPI E squared PROM so it can meet its operation spec. Again, I change the write data byte, let's say 77 hex and the complement is 88 hex. I click on the throughput test button. After the test completes, you can see that the total time to write the FRAM is about 0.16 seconds, and the E squared PROM is about 2.7 seconds. So that means the FRAM is 16 times faster to fill than the E squared PROM. Actually, this is a limitation of this demo kit. By spec, 
The FRAM is really 200 times faster than the same size E squared problem. So this is a really cool test to show. The third and final test is the power fail test. The power fail test looks at the last moment of data storage, the moment when power is suddenly lost. Since an E squared has to hold a full page of memory for five milliseconds before it can complete its store, that full page is at risk. It will be lost on any power interrupt. An E squared design has to include a battery or a large capacitor to hold the E squared up long enough to complete its last store, or that last page of data will be lost forever. FRAM has no delay. So we save the last complete byte of data received without any battery or any capacitor. To execute the power fail test, again, write the right data to five milliseconds for the E squared prompt, and again, change the right data byte to anything you want. Click on the power fail test button and wait for the yellow LED to blink several times, then turn off. This indicates that the demo setup is ready for the power fail test. Now turn off the power supply by switching this on-off switch on the FRAM board to the off position. After switching it off, notice that a result window that shows the last writable address is on the screen. Power on the demo by moving the switch back to the on position. Now let's look at the result window. The FRAM result window shows all greens, indicating the expected data was written to the FRAM and saved correctly. But there is one page that last page, 64 bytes of data on the EEPROM that were lost. This is shown by the single red line in the results. Again, an abrupt power fail in a system can corrupt the data in a full page of an E squared, while all the data is always safe in the FRAM. Well, that completes the serial FRAM demo training. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you need fast writes or lots of writes, please look at the FRAM product. It has lots of very cool features. For more information, go to www.cypress.com forward slash nonvolatile. And thank you for listening.